what is up my youtube family welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then it's just welcome to my channel and now welcome back go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you will not be disappointed unless of course your taste level is lacking if that's the case then girl i don't know what to tell you because i can't relate y'all i'm having a mimosa today okay with some dry fruit in it because it's been one of those weeks for me i hope y'all are having a better week let me tell y'all what happened to me one day this week it was so traumatic girl i don't even know the day okay i as you can kind of see behind me here if you can see out this window so over this shoulder, you can kind of see some greenery out there. Those are tomato plants because I got a whole little garden situation out here on my patio. Long story short, I have been growing those tomato plants since they were like the tiniest little seedlings. And I was so excited the other day when I went out there and saw that I have baby tomatoes growing. Like they're so cute. I took a picture. I sent them to everybody. I sent them to my friends, girl, posted them to Instagram. So you probably saw them. Sent them to my mama. Like I was so proud of my first tomatoes. There was one one on one plant and three babies on another plant. That's important for the story. So every day I've been out there excited, right? I've been watering them, I've fertilized them, I'm looking at them all the time, thrilled. And then I get on TikTok looking at like care for tomato plants in bloom, right? And one of the biggest tips was like, make sure that if you have babies, they are not shaded by other leaves. So I'm like, oh no, I need to go and make sure my babies have full sun. So I go out there with the shear right I go out there with the shears and I promise I looked at every branch that I snipped thoroughly at least at least I thought I did after I do the cutbacks I'm like okay now let me look at my babies I don't see the babies so I'm like wait a minute what's going on here where are my children y'all I look at the branch that I cut there they are three of the four three of them my heart sank like I was genuinely so sad and distraught. Like I was so distraught. I sent this message to my uh, my girl Ashley, who is like my gardening um, mentor. And I'm so distraught, I barely can get English out. Like the grammar was going crazy. I text my friends that I'm about to cry because I really, I really wanted to. And I was like, I'm not gonna cry, like just relax, you know? And I think about Ashley saying like, every flower has the potential to be a tomato. So I'm like, I got plenty flowers. And a lot of these flowers have already dropped the petals. So I'm like, there could be more babies, y'all. I take my little finger and lift up one of the little babies and I see the tiniest little baby tomato inside and I'm like oh I have more babies and I kid you not it snaps off and hits the ground and what I thought was like an echo of the stem snapping was actually the straw breaking the camel's back baby I literally just I just cried I cried right there outside in front of all the little construction men doing their job in front of the dogs they were very much looking confused well blue know what's up he's he'll be seven in a couple of weeks so he started licking my leg like girl I don't know what's going on today but I promise it's okay and now that I've gotten like time to process my emotions emotions and feelings I, it wasn't just about the tomato like it's everything I feel like the world is just on fire girl they got the war going on family drama and then y'all know my trigger like y'all know I have a soft spot for children so much so that I don't cover like child crimes where they're the victims but I have recently decided to like challenge myself in a way I'll, I'll talk to y'all more about it later but I have decided to take on this challenge that kind of put that passion for issues concerning children like to use as opposed to it just being you know a trigger or a soft spot but so that's been going on and consistently my little garden out here has just brought me so much joy like it's been my space to go to and just be so happy and peaceful girl and that on top of all of the things I was like you know what I'm about to hurl my body over the balcony that's actually what I told Ashley I was like girl I'm about to jump she was like don't jump actually I don't think she told me not to jump she did not tell me not to jump but she did tell me that there will be more tomatoes and so that was encouraging damn Ashley girl you ain't tell me not to jump that's crazy but I will say I have gone out there today and there are so many teeny tiny babies popping up in all three of my tomato plant so I am super excited about that and I'm feeling a lot better I had to just reel myself in and I also want to mention for anybody who could use this little bit of information catnip if ingested works if you don't know as like like an edible type of situation for a dog right you hear that you hear that in the background me neither because both of my dogs are knocked out I saw a little plant of it at Home Depot picked it up for about six dollars planted it and it is going crazy out there with the herbs so much so that I'm about to have to cut some of it back and 
and like make dog biscuits out of it to keep it from going bad and wasting it. And no, I don't give it to them all the time. This is only the third time that they've had some. And I don't give them a lot. I give them like one leaf a piece, knocks them out. It's very much giving melatonin mama in the words of my sister. All right, without further ado, let's get into today's story. We are talking about the case of Teofazo Pule. And this is a case that took place in South Africa. And without further ado, I'm gonna get right into the details. All right, y'all know how I give it up. Let me give this, listen. see, I can't even speak English, okay? Let me give this disclaimer that I'm gonna do my best with the pronunciations, okay? I'm doing my best. Teofazo Pule is born on May 10th of 1992 and grows up in Meadowland, Soweto. And from very early on, she is known to be a super fashionable, lively girl with a very big personality and a bright smile. She is a very jovial, very happy child, but tragically, she loses both of her parents by the age of 10 and she is raised by an aunt. In addition to this aunt, she does have a village of friends and family who are very close and supportive. Now, she has always, as previously mentioned, been into all things beauty and fashion and it is a dream of hers to pursue a career that will let her live out her love for both. One of her very first jobs is at the mat counter and she really enjoys not only doing people's makeup but like teaching them. It brings her a lot of joy and while not working to build a foundation for her future she is spending most of her time with her family and friends. Now, unfortunately her sister has had a tougher time dealing with the loss of their parents and how much their lives have changed since but she is very close to her sister and makes a very conscious effort to support her. All in all life is good and she is thriving. In her mid-20s she meets a man by the name of Intutuko and he is a man that she is familiar with from high school. He is enamored by not only her looks but her very charming personality. He begins his pursuit of her hiding the fact that he is currently engaged to be married to a whole nother woman. Rosette. And a big part of why he is able to conceal this from Teofazo is the nature of their relationship. She's not looking for anything very serious. Their relationship is very casual and she is more focused on her career. Although her friends and family are aware that she's seeing someone, they don't really know any of the details like his name or anything because she keeps them on the low. But months into their situation, she finds out that she is now pregnant and it is looking like in Tutuko is not going to be able to hide this whole situation with her much longer unless of course he is able to convince her to terminate the pregnancy. The two of them have the conversation and he tells her that he's just not quite ready and on paper it's not really making sense why. It seems that the two of them together would be more than capable of co-parenting and raising a child. She's doing well for herself. He has a high paying job working in information technology, but little does she know he is also about to get married. But taking his unpreparedness into consideration, she makes the difficult decision not to go through with the pregnancy. And child, you would think that Ntutuko learned something from this. However, he continues his relationship with her while simultaneously continuing his planning for this wedding. No extra precautions are taken this time around and again in 2019 she becomes pregnant. When she tells him the news he tells her that they must do again what they did the first time. This time Teofazo is unwilling to terminate the pregnancy. The first time around was extremely difficult for her and she does not want to put herself through that physical or emotional torment again so she's decided that that she's keeping their baby, whether he wants the baby or not. Now, around this time, Teofazo gets word from a cousin of hers that she had seen him out with a woman and that she had heard that this lady was his wife. And she had known him to be quite a bit of a player. So she warns Teofazo that he is not to be trusted. Like he is not, he's not the one. And this is not all that she finds out about in Tutuko. Once she makes it very clear to him that she has decided to keep this baby, she catches a glimpse of his 
true character. His attitude toward her does a complete 180. He is just nasty and rude all the time and honestly at this point she just figures that maybe he needs a little bit of time to come around and she doesn't mind being patient. But despite what he has going on over there she is fully prepared to be a mother to this child and she has a whole network, a whole village behind her that are also there to support her. But unfortunately as the months progress it is not looking like he is going to come around at all. She invites him to all of the doctor's appointments and at one point is begging him to attend. He refuses. He threatens her all the time that she'll be a single mother taking care of this child all by herself even financially which is very triggering to her because now she is without work and with it being the height of the pandemic and her being a very pregnant woman it is very difficult for her to find work anywhere and as if that is not child stressful enough he begins denying the likelihood that he is this child's father. Even still Tara Fatso remains positive and excited about becoming a mother. She and her family are actually super excited about this new addition and they're just patiently awaiting the baby's arrival. To her it made sense for her to immediately fall in love with her baby and she held out a little bit of hope that maybe it would just take him seeing the baby for himself to fall in love with his child. Unbeknownst to her his vision for their future is very opposite of hers. But toward the eight month mark, Ntutuko begins showing signs that he is finally coming around. He reaches out to her and expresses that he's having a bit of a change of heart and he would like to take her shopping for the baby. She of course jumps at the opportunity, ecstatic about the thought of him finally coming around. And when telling her aunt about their shopping trip that they're about to take, her aunt is a little bit leery of this. It sounds a bit strange to her and she questions Teo Fato. We are at the height of the pandemic. A lot of the stores are closing now that it is after 4 p.m. and a lot of them aside from that are just not even open and to have to close. But she herself doesn't see anything suspicious about it and she feels like her aunt is kind of, you know, just being a war reward, like paranoid. She calls for an Uber to take her over to his house and she tells her aunt that she'll be back no later than 10 p.m. They spend the evening out shopping and afterward they return to his apartment. She stays there for a while before he calls for an Uber to take her home, walks her to the gate of his community and stands just outside like a gentleman as she gets into the car. But Teo Fatso never makes it home. The following day, her aunt is very alarmed when she wakes up and finds that Teo Fatso is not there and she had not come home last night. Initially she believes or assumes that maybe she had spent the night with him but when she is unable to reach her by call or text she gets the feeling that something is very wrong. Her aunt waits a while hopeful that she will you know she will hear from her but when she doesn't the aunt goes to the police station to find a missing persons report, believing that something has happened to her niece. She, along with other members of the family and some of the friends of the family, go out and also search for her. They believe without a shadow of a doubt that she is with this man. Now, if she is okay or not, who knows? On June 8th, just four days after her initial disappearance, the family is contacted and made aware that a body has been found by a man while cleaning up a field. And through photos, the family positively identifies this body as eight-month pregnant Teo Fatso. She had been found bloodied and hanging from a tree. After getting into the Uber, Teo Fatso realized that the Uber driver is not going in the direction of her home. She points this out to the driver, but at first he ignores it. When she begins pressuring him for an answer, he tells her that there was something that he needed to go drop off right quick before he takes her home. But instead, he takes her to a secluded field, one that he believed would leave her undiscovered for a very long time, if at all. He then shoots her her in the chest and hangs her from a tree and leaves her there. Now with her being discovered, the horrific details of the crime spread all over the news. And of course, it sparks a lot of public outrage. There are several protests held demanding justice for her and to protest the insane amount of gender-based violence currently going on in South Africa. Because unfortunately, as horrible as her story is, it is the story of many women. The public is fed up with 
this ongoing crisis of violence against women that is plaguing the country. And a big part of the problem they feel is law enforcement not really cracking down on it and holding those responsible accountable. I read in an article while I was researching this that during this time, on average, a woman is killed every three hours in South Africa. And more often than not, it is at the hands of a partner. The people had had enough and they were demanding that their officials take some sort of action. Now, once Tel Faso is positively identified, police zero in on the father of her unborn child as a potential suspect. But when they go and speak with him, he admits that yes, she had visited his home that evening, but he had seen her off safely to her Uber. And he can prove it because the security footage would have caught it. And when they go to look at the security footage from the apartment complex, it shows that. But what also catches their attention is her demeanor walking toward the Uber. She hesitates for whatever reason. She's very visibly reluctant to get into this car. But despite that, she had ultimately gotten in anyway. It looks to them like she felt like something was off, like she shouldn't get in the car. And this would actually be the second time within a matter of days that her intuition had warned her about this very same man sitting in the Uber unbeknownst to her. Listening to her intuition had spared her the first time but unfortunately tonight things are different. The Uber driver is actually a hitman. In May of 2020 just a few weeks prior to the night that he picked her up and Tutuko had gotten in touch with Muzi Kaise, the hitman, someone that he knew from back in the day and had a hand in crime that he felt could help free him of his perceived problem. Now, Ntutuko asked his acquaintance to find someone who could perform this hit, but for the 70,000 rand that he is ultimately willing to pay, Muzi Kaise decides that he is going to do it himself. They initially meet in person to discuss the details of Ntutuko wanting Teofato gone for good, and Muzi Kaise had reached out to her posing as an interviewer for a job opportunity. Remind you, at the time, she is currently unemployed with the baby on the way, and she really needs the money. So she entertains the caller, but to tell Faso, something about this just felt off. So she respectfully declined his offer to meet. A wise decision, of course, but unfortunately, he and Ntutuko just had another meeting to sort of revise the plan. On June 4th, they met again to make the necessary arrangements for this new plan. And this time, Ntutuko decided that it would probably be best for him to be the bait to lure her in with the promise of him wanting to be a father. And of course, Muzi Kaise is not an Uber driver, but the hitman posing as one. And Ntutuko is delivering her right to him. From the surveillance footage, they also get the license plate of the car that picks her up. They contact the woman that it is registered to and find out the identity of the driver, her boyfriend, Muzi Kaise. Confronted with this evidence, he folds like laundry, okay? He starts singing like a canary. He admits that he did all of this to her, but only at the request of Ntutuko over her pregnancy. He is placed under arrest and in January of 2021 pleads guilty. For his actions, he receives a 20-year prison sentence and he also becomes a witness for the state. Now, Ntutuko, despite being named as the mastermind, boldly denies the claims made by Muzi Kaisa and he maintains his innocence. He turns over his cell phone as proof that he had no communication whatsoever with Muzi Kaise, which is very clever considering the fact that he has a burner phone nobody really knows about, at least not at first. So they find the phone and he is also arrested and he continues to deny all of the things right up until his trial beginning in 2022. Now, during his trial, of course, Muzi Kaise comes and testifies against him. He says that initially, Ntutuko wanted her gone, but he wanted her hung from a bridge right near a very busy road. So it's like he wanted her on display, which was very sick. But Muzi Kaise decided that that was just too risky. He is the one out here doing the dirty work, so he is not about to risk being seen. He also says that Ntutuko wanted it to look like she had done this to herself, which is why he wanted her hung. But he had shot her first 
out of panic because she had begun asking questions and he was already very anxious to get it over with and get out of there. Now, where Muzi Kaise goes wrong is in his initial interview with the police, he claimed that Intutuko was there at the scene, but in court, he's saying that Intutuko was not there. Of course, his defense brings that up and tries to discredit the witness and make it seem like, you know, hey, we can't trust anything he's saying because he's a liar. When they are not sure that this would shed a little doubt on his testimony, they lean on sympathy. They say that Intutuko was under a lot of stress. He has his girlfriend pregnant. He does not want to upset his future wife who has just lost her mother to cancer dealing with that and now or potentially finding out that he has a baby on the way will probably break Rosette and he just does not want to do that she had already found out about him cheating and had allegedly sent messages to Teo Faso to leave her man alone when she did find out but she had not known that Teo Faso was pregnant until the news broke about her body being discovered he also claims during trial that he would never hurt his unborn child and was genuine when he told her that his heart was changing. He even goes so far to say that he had reached a place of excitement about becoming a father, even debating with Teo Fatso about the baby's name, wanting to give the baby a name that means daddy's girl. He says, quote, to think I could kill an innocent soul that is my own flesh and blood is nonsense at best. In the end, the efforts of his defense team are no match for the prosecution and all the damning evidence against him. July of 2022, in Tutuko, Showa is found guilty and receives a life sentence in prison for orchestrating the murder of Teo Fatso. Many people were still upset because they felt like he should have been charged for his unborn child as well. And the prosecution did say the charges could come later, as they should. Teo Fatso's family decided not to stop at the justice that they had received for her. They continue to fight for the safety of all women and the countless other victims that have not gotten justice. And a lot of people have stood with them, of course. Teo Faso's face is used often on protest signs demanding government action on these outrageous crimes against women. A foundation in Teo Faso's name was also launched to provide support for gender-based violence victims. And her family is completely committed to keeping her name alive and also driving change. And that pretty much wraps up today's video please let me know your comments down below like the video share with a friend subscribe to the channel if you have not as always i appreciate you so much for spending your time with me and i look forward to seeing you in the next one peace is my necklace upside down and is shout out to the scorpios that i messed up the light and girl be still i feel like the wig part looks crooked on camera but like in person it's not giving crooked at all so i don't know what to do about that uh-uh not a net in my face girl get back Teo Fato Pule is from South, well, I just said South Africa, girl. Duh. As I mentioned before, she's always been into, okay. As previously, I can't speak today, why? Why, why? She wants to now pursue a drink, blah, 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 blah. He is enamored by not only her charming person, okay, no. Yo, this uh, catnip might have backfired because Papa is. When I say he's in a whole different room snoring like that, he is going crazy in there. He begins denying the f ugh, believed would not, would bleh, ugh, but only at the request of Intutico. No, I done made it all this way without mispronouncing his name. And now I want to cut up in the end. I've been through enough this week, like, please. But only at the request of Intutico. You know what? July of 2022, Intutoko, and that is nice name.